everyone. My name is Rose Visser. I'm an occupational therapist and activities of daily living instructor at Vision Forward Association. This is our Cooking Sense class, and this is where we explore a number of cooking tools and techniques that are adaptive that can help you to cook with your senses. Um, today's session is going to give you an overview of a number of adaptive cooking tools that can really help you to cook safely and effectively in the kitchen. Uh, today's session is meant to provide you with just a taste of some of these adaptive tools. There are lots of tools and techniques out there. Um, if you are interested in some additional one-on-one -on -one cooking training, we do offer that through Vision Forward Association, including virtual training. Um, if you're interested in that, please get in touch with us through our website, uh, www.vision-forward.org. Um, you can also reach out directly to us at our main number at 414-615-0115. Um, just to note too that most of the tools that I will be showing today are available through our Vision Forward store. We do have an online store. Uh, feel free to get in touch with them through our website as well or also directly at 414-615-0111. Um, today's session is being filmed with the help of my son. He's behind the camera today, so I have to give him some props for that. Um, okay, I think we are ready to get started. So the tools that I am going to be showing, I, I've kind of grouped into different areas. Um, the first area has to do with organization and identification in the kitchen. This is a very important area. Um, if you want to be able to prepare food safely and effectively, You'll need to know what your items are. If you can't see them, um, you'll need to know what your ingredients are, your supplies, um, your recipes. You'll need to be able to read your recipes. So some of these tools can be helpful with identifying your items. Um, one simple tool that I, that I often recommend is to put your items inside of containers. Um, containers um, can be many different styles and types. Um, containers could be a simple clear bin like what I have right here. It's a, a clear bin um, that has some soup cans in it. Um, containers help you to um, separate items that are different. They also help you to group items that are alike together. And that way, once items are inside of a container, you don't need your, your vision. You can use your sense of touch to feel the borders of the container and then to find the items inside just by using your sense of touch. Um, containers can also be labeled, as you can see on the front of this container. I have a number of labels that I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but you can put labels on them so you can identify what's inside of the container just by touching the outside of the container. Um, so again, containers could be a, a clear bin that you get at the dollar store, uh, thrift stores, but they could also be things that you already have around your home. Um, Ziploc bags work really good as containers. Um, this is a, a, a box of pancake mix that I put inside of a Ziploc bag. So that's a container. Shoe boxes can also be containers. So, you know, look around your home, see if you already have items um, in your home that would work well as containers. So definitely that's something to, to do before you start to work in the kitchen is to organize your items by their type and put them inside of containers. A very important thing to do before you start to cook. Um, so I talked about labels. There's different types of labels that you can put on items in your kitchen so that you can easily identify them non-visually. One type of um, item of label is called bump dots. Bump dots come in many different colors, uh, shapes, sizes. Bump dots are basically raised stickers that you can feel that you put on certain items that I'll show you in just a minute. So somebody who has no vision would be able to feel this sticker. Um, somebody who has what we call low vision, they have some trouble seeing, would be able to see these a lot easier because they're a bright orange color. They come in contrasting colors, black, white, bright orange. So depending on what you're putting them on, say you're going to put them on a black surface, you would probably choose the bright orange or maybe the white color, so you have opposite colors, so they stand out. Um, so those are the bump dots. Um, I'm also gonna show you um, on our microwave in just a minute, 
um, some contrasting stickers that you can put on your microwave keypad. Um, so again, thinking about contrast, whenever you have opposite colors, it makes things a little bit easier to see. So these contrasting sticker labels have the numbers in white and then the background is in black, which really makes those numbers stand out. So let me show you how I use these bump dots and the number stickers on our microwave in our kitchen here. So we're gonna head on down to our microwave. And so I have a, a, a microwave. Um, most microwaves are completely flat on the control panel. So it's hard to, to find the numbers in the settings that you want. The contrast is usually poor. Um, there, this microwave has, it looks like gray letters and numbers against a black background. Very hard to see if you have low vision. And then of course, if you have no vision, you're not gonna be able to find your settings. So what we did is we put a bump dot, you can see this bright orange bump dot on one of the settings. We put it on the time cook setting. Um, we also put a clear bump dot that you probably can't see real well on the number five. So somebody who has no vision would easily be able to feel and find that bump dot. Um, and then you can also see the number, the large print contrasting number stickers that we put on the, each of the numbers. The nice thing about these number contrasting number stickers too is that not only can you see them if you have some vision, but if you have no vision, you can feel where those numbers are, which, which is helpful. So if you're looking to put, let's say you want to put in your microwave for, um, you know, 145. You would first find that bump dot for the five and then slide your fingers around until you can find that one and then go down to the four and then find that bump dot again on the five. So it makes it a little bit easier to find things non-visually. Um, so again, those bump dots can be helpful not only on your microwave, on your stove or oven, anything that has controls and numbers and settings on them. Washing machines and dryers, it can be very helpful for as well. And then other tools in the kitchen. So we're going to come back on down. So we're talking still again about um, labels in the kitchen. Um, so we talked about bump dots. We talked about the large print number stickers. I want to also talk a little bit about wiki sticks. Wiki sticks are a fun um, craft supply. You can use it to make different craft projects. Um, if you're stuck in the house right now, this is a fun little thing to work on. Um, it's actually craft wax. So it comes in lots of different colors. So again, we are talking about contrast. Um, you can choose a wax color that contrasts with the background. Um, it's bendable. You can bend it in different um, symbols and shapes. And it's something you can feel. So somebody with no vision would be able to find this useful. Um, and it's removable. So you could press it on a surface, press it down real good, and then pull it back up. It's, it's a great tool. So let me show you an example of how we might use this in the kitchen. I have a spice bottle right here. If I have no vision, I can't tell what this is. It's, it's the same shape as many of my other spice bottles. If I have low vision, I may not be able to see the label real well. So what I could do is put a little wiki stick label on the top of it. This one, this is onion powder. So I made the wiki stick in the shape of an O. So if I'm reaching in my pantry looking for my onion powder, all I do is feel the, the cover, feel the top of the spice bottle, and I can feel that it's in the shape of an O for an onion powder. If I have some vision, I could use, make the wiki stick in maybe a bright red color so it would contrast real well. Um, so that's one way that you could use the wiki sticks. Um, if we go back over to the microwave, I'm gonna show you how we used it on our microwave you can see a yellow marking on here in the shape of a P. And we put that on our popcorn button. Um, so it's a, it's a bright yellow color, so it can't contrast well with the black background on the microwave. And also it's something I can feel. If I have no vision, I can just kind of reach around here and I can feel like, oh, there's something kind of sticky there. That's my wiki stick label. And oh, it's in the shape of a P for popcorn. Um, that's a very common button that people use on their microwaves. Um, so many uses for that, the wiki sticks. Just keep in mind, it is wax, so you wouldn't want to put it necessarily on your stove um, or oven because it could melt. Um, the bump dots are very um, durable, um, so they can take the heat um, really well.
Um, there's also a type of label called spot and line pen. Um, spot and line pen is kind of like a paint and it works the same way as the bump dots do. Um, let's see if I do have some. Um, actually, if we look over here at our stove, so we're gonna zoom in on our stove. Um, on the control panel, on the oven, actually on the oven, we outlined the temperature settings where you adjust the temperature for the oven with bright orange spot and line pen. Um, it comes in a little tube, it's a special type of a paint. So we made an arrow going up and an arrow going down. That's our way to adjust the temperature. And like the bump dots, once you stick it on there, it's pretty durable, it's heat resistant, it's gonna stay on there. Um, and also, um, so again, keep that in mind, it's, it's fairly permanent. You wouldn't want to necessarily use the spot and line pen if you're in a, an apartment and borrowing somebody's stove or oven, but you could also use the bump dots as well. So again, that spot and line pen, it comes in a tube, it's paint, you do have to allow time for it to dry um, versus the bump dots, which are stickers, and you can just put those right on. Again, just a reminder, most of these tools are available at the Vision Forward store, our online store. So that's the, the spot and line pen, bump dots, a number of labels that can make things a little bit easier. I want to show you kind of a more high-tech way to label items, and that's through um, something called the Pen Friend. Um, the Pen Friend is a labeling tool that allows you to record information onto special labels, special sticker labels that come with it. It also comes with magnet labels as well. Um, so what you do is you record a message onto that sticker, and then you place that sticker on a certain item that you need to be able to identify. And I will show you some examples of how this works. Um, uh, one way you may want to use it, I'll show you um, the tool. It looks like a big pen, that's why we call it the pen friend. I'm gonna turn it on by pressing the great big button at the top. And there's a, a number of very simple buttons on here. There's a record button that you press to record a message. There's also a a volume button so you can increase or decrease the volume and then there's a mode button that allows you to transfer the recordings from your stickers onto your computer if you wish to do that. A number of other uses for that mode button as well that I won't get into. Um, so let me show you some examples how, of how we might use this. So our can of soup we don't know you know what it is again we don't know the recipe or anything on it. So I recorded a message onto here and all I have to do again is touch the tip of the device to that label. So let's listen. Broccoli cheese soup. So it said broccoli cheese soup. I could also record, again, the recipe that's on the back of it. So it's a simple way to identify your items. Um, let's check out a couple of other uses for it. Um, items in the refrigerator and freezer. A lot of times it's hard to tell what they are. It's hard to tell if they're still good, if they're beyond their expiration date. Um, I have a package of um, some type of meat <laughs> that I had in the freezer. Um, so we're gonna use our pen friend to tell what this is. So um, all I do, again, I have my device on, is touch the device to that label and we'll listen to it. Ground beef, April 10th, 2020. So it said ground beef, April 10th, 2020. So I recorded the name of the item and then also when I packaged it up and put it in the freezer so that I know if it's, you know, way beyond, I, I shouldn't eat it. Um, I also, for this, you'll notice this label is just a simple large print label that I put on an index card. I wrote out what it is in the expiration date in a bold marker. That's another way that you could identify your items. If you have some vision, just write things out in a nice bold marking in large print. That's another good way. And then rubber band your little label to your food package. Um, the pen friend can also be useful for recipes. Um, I have a recipe card just on written out on an index um, index card. Again, written out in large print. If you're able to see, that's a good way to write out your, your recipes. I also have a, um, a pen friend label in the corner. So again, what I do is take the device and touch that label. So it's going through and, and playing that recipe that I recorded. Um, so not another simple way that you could um, record your recipes. You know, accessing recipes can be a little tricky if you have very limited vision or no vision. 
food packages have recipes on the food package that can be tough to read. Um, besides some of those ways to record your recipes, you can also print one out in Braille if you read Braille and attach that to your item. Um, there's a lot of technology out there that can help with reading food packages. Um, a lot of apps, um, Seeing AI, KNFB Reader are also a couple of apps that can be useful for reading text on packages. Um, there's also a lot of technology that can be helpful in the kitchen for identification. Our microwave that we saw earlier is um, connected with our Amazon Echo. So it's voice controlled as well. I don't have it turned on right now. Um, but we could say add 30 seconds or uh, microwave this for one minute. So there are ways to use some of that technology to be able to access and identify your items in the kitchen. Um, so those are some tools for identification. I want to talk a little bit about um, using the stove and oven again. Um, we already talked a little bit about some ways that you can identify your items um, in the, um, on, the, on, the mic or on the stove. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about some safety related items. Um, I do recommend before you start to use the oven or stove is to get some one-on-one -on -one training on using it. I don't, I don't recommend that you just go get these tools and start using it right away, especially if you haven't in a long time or you don't feel comfortable doing that. Again, we do offer that training uh, through Vision Forward Association. So just a couple of tips for safety um, when you're using the stove or oven. Um, always have a nice set of oven mitts or oven gloves. Long oven mitts are very important. Um, these ones come up pretty far um, to your elbow. A lot of times oven, oven mitts only cover your wrist, so they're not very long. Again, we sell these in our, our store. Uh, but these ones come up very long, so look for ones that do come up um, far on your arm. Oven gloves are great too. Um, oven gloves are nice because they allow you a little bit more fine motor control versus the oven mitt. It can sometimes be hard to pick things up and grasp things with the, the mitt. So with the glove, you can have more control so it's easier to grasp a pan that you're removing from the oven. Um, these ones are especially designed to take the heat of the oven. So I could grab onto a hot pan, I won't burn myself. These look similar to the of glove that you may have seen advertised on TV um, or see for sale in stores. Um, but what's nice about this is it comes a little bit further down on your arm. So it's longer, still going to protect your arm when you're reaching in the oven, and you have that fine motor control. So having some oven mitts or oven gloves is important. Um, another thing um, that that's important is to have oven um, guard, oven rack guards in your oven. You'll notice um, in our oven here, we have oven rack guards on, that snap onto the front of each of the two oven, oven racks. These oven rack guards are made out of material similar to what firefighters have in their oven. So it's, it's heat safe. Um, they can just kind of stay in your oven once you snap them onto the front of the oven racks. And if you happen to touch your oven rack with your, your arm or your hand, you're not going to burn yourself. So it protects your hands and your arms. Another nice benefit of these is they come in white. A lot of times ovens are black or dark in color. So if you have that limited vision, um, you're going to see that good contrast of the oven rack. Um, you're going to know where the front of the oven rack is, so you're, you're going to be able to safely place your pan on all the way on your oven rack. So a couple benefits to using those. Again, they just stay on your oven racks um, when you're ready to, to clean them or wash them, unsnap them and throw them in the washing machine or dryer and they wash up nicely. Um, so oven rack guards are important. Um, another thing that's important to have, um, this is called a push-pull tool. It's um, actually a wooden stick. It looks like it's made out of a ruler. And it, so what it is, it has a, um, a little indentation on one end and a little hook on that same end. So what you're going to do is you open up your oven. I always tell people when you're opening up your oven to stand off to the side. Don't stand in front of it because then that heat will get up into your face. When you're standing to the side of the oven too, you can stabilize yourself against the counter or, or the oven as well. So what I'm going to do is pull out that oven rack by using the little hook in the push-pull tool. All I do is tap it somewhere on the oven rack on the front and then try to hook it and pull that oven rack out. 
That way, you're not having to reach into the oven and lean over too closely to the oven. It kind of puts some distance between you and the oven. And then when you're ready to push in the oven wrap, all you do is find that little indentation on the end and then push it right. I do recommend that when you're pushing and pulling an oven rack, do so from the middle part of the rack so it's a little bit easier to do. So that's the push-pull tool. I also recommend having a wooden spoon handy near your, your oven when you're working with the stove top or the oven. The wooden spoon allows you to find things on your stove top. So if you, you know, you're cooking something on the stove top, you kind of walk to the side and then you want to safely find that pan again, you don't want to start grabbing around with your hand. You're going to ruin yourself. But you could use your wooden tool to kind of tap until you find where that pan is. The wooden spoon also helps you to find that pan book too as well. So a great, kind of a basic handy tool. Um, other things to have at the stove when you're working it, um, with the stove or the oven is some sort of a timer. I highly recommend that anytime you're cooking, you use a timer. Because if you have, have limited vision, you're not going to be able to tell if something is done by looking at it. So you have to have some other means to tell when something is done. And that's where an adaptive timer can be helpful. This timer is just kind of a basic timer. But we, we adapted it with a couple of bump dots. You'll notice on here. It's also very basic where it's set up like a telephone. So we know the first row is one, two, three. We slide down four, five, six. So it's very basic. And then when I press a button, it beeps. Um, when it's all done, we're going to hear that beeping sound. So again, having some sort of a timer. Your cell phones are a great tool. Um, your cell phones are often on you. So that's another good way to, to time your cooking or your baking. One other item with the stove when you're cooking items, again, telling when something is done is can be a difficult task, especially meat, you know, chicken and pork. You really want to make sure they're done all the way. Um, talking meat thermometers can be helpful. So this is just, it looks like a basic meat thermometer, um, but it's a talking one. So when I press a button, on. it said on. So it's kind of talking me through how to use it. Once I have it turned on, I'm going to press it into the meat. Um, somewhere in the middle, thick part of the meat, until it touches the bottom of the pan, and then I raise up right away. I don't want the bottom of this, this prong touching the pan, because it's going to register the heat of the pan and not of the meat. So once I get it in there, um, I push a button that says FT, which is fast temperature, and it's going to be beeping. I'm going to let that go for about 10 beeps, and then I'm going to press the talk button. And so it announces the, te the temperature. So you do have to know what temperature is a, is a safe temperature. Um, 165 is kind of a magic number for a lot of meats. So, um, so you do have to know that temperature, but then you can listen and hear what it is and then know and, and be confident that the meat is cooked all the way. And again, especially for things like chicken and pork. Um, and also you don't want to overcook your meat. Um, you want it to be cooked to the right temperature. So those are just a couple of safety tips with using um, the stove. Oh, real quickly too, um, just a couple things about pans, pots and pans when you're cooking. Um, using heavy pots and pans is, is good because then they don't slide around on you as much when you're stirring items. You know, when you're browning meat, instead of browning it in a, a shallow skillet, brown it in a big uh, stew pan like, like the one I have here so that the items stay inside of the pot or pan. Um, thinking about contrast, if you have some vision left, um, have a variety of pans that are, you know, black, ones that are white. I have a white skillet right here. If I'm cooking something like maybe a steak, I would cook it in this white skillet so that I can see it a little bit easier. Um, if you're cooking something like a chicken breast, maybe cook it in a black pan. So thinking about ways to add some of that contrast to enhance your vision um, can be helpful. So again, those are some items for cooking uh, in, on the stovetop or in the oven. Um, the next area we're going to talk about is um, boiling food. Um, when you're boiling things like potatoes or um, boiling water for potatoes or eggs, um, items like that, pasta, it can be hard to tell when the water is boiling. Um, the tendency is to uh, lean in if you have limited vision to try to see if that water is moving or to listen and, and tell if the water is moving and boiling, 
but it can be difficult. That can be an unsafe way to um, tell if water is boiling because you're leaning in too close. Um, but there are a couple of tools that can be helpful. Um, one is called a boil alert. Um, this is just a simple little um, ceramic disc. It's very low tech, very simple. Um, how this works though is when you're getting ready to boil water, you fill up your pan with water, you place the disc inside of the pan, um, usually uh, kind of in the middle so it's not touching the side of the pan. And then you turn on your burner, let the, let the water heat up. When the water is boiling at a nice boil, this little disc is going to be rattling against the bottom of the pan. So that tells you that your water is boiling. And then all you do is go and strain your water. This comes out in the strainer, let it cool off before you touch it because it will be hot. And then you kind of uh, fish it out, um, out after that. So that can be a handy little tool. Um, another thing that can be helpful is um, a silicone food pod. It's basically a, it's a, a silicone circle um, container. And what you do is you open it up and you put in your, your potatoes. I have some potatoes in here. You put in your eggs, your pasta. It has a whole bunch of little holes here. So you wouldn't want to use tiny pasta. They'll fall right out. <laughs> um, but anything bigger than the little holes here you can use. And then you put your cover on. Again, you fill up your pan with water. And then what you do is you put the silicone pot right in the pan of water. It has a little hook on the handle that you can hook on the side of the pan if you want, or you can just drape it over the side. You let the water boil, you boil your items, and then what's nice about this is when you're all done, you simply lift up the handle and pull the silicone pod out. You don't have to walk over to the sink and strain it or anything like that. It's all, all done. A lot easier solution than having to, you know, try to balance your pot of water and bring it over to the sink. So it's an, a safer option for sure. All right, so that's boiling. Those are a couple of techniques again. I want to plug getting some actual training um, so that you can ensure that you are doing following the technique safely. I want to talk a little bit about cutting techniques. Um, cutting can be a difficult thing to do if you can't see well. Um, it can be hard to tell uh, where your fingers are, where the vegetable is, whatever you're cutting. Um, so a couple techniques that can help with that. One is using a cutting glove. So this looks like a regular glove that you might wear in the winter time, but it's actually interwoven with stainless steel. Um, it's very flexible. You can't tell there's stainless steel in it. But how this works is when you are cutting something, um, you, you're holding on to say your onion or whatever it is. You still want, always want to curl your fingers whenever you're holding on to something. But if the knife gets a little too close to your fingers, you're not going to nick yourself. You're not going to cut yourself. So it's just a little added safety, especially when you're, you're new to cutting or you're getting back into the kitchen after not having been in there for a long time. The cutting glove can be helpful. We sell these in our store in a, in a two pack. So you can really, again, you could put it on both hands if you just want to protect your hands when you're doing other cooking tasks. It can be very helpful. So that's the cutting glove. Um, another couple of tools that can be helpful when you're cutting. Um, one is a cutting board that's a contrasting cutting board. So this board is black on one side and white on the other. It's very hard to find out at the stores a black cutting board. You can find white, you can find other colors, clear, but it's hard to find black ones. So it's nice to have this one all in one. So let me show you how this would work. If you have some vision, um, say you're cutting a white onion. If you want a white or yellow onion, if you put it against the white board, it can be kind of hard to tell where it's at. If we flip the board over and we put that onion against the blackboard, we can see it right away. So it adds that contrast and maximizes your vision, helps you to see it a lot better, and helps you to be, a, be safer when you're cutting. Another item that I have here is a piece of non-slip shelf liner, which can be very helpful whenever you're cutting items and using a cutting board. So what you do is you lay it down and then you set your cutting board on top of the shelf liner and it doesn't move on you. It stabilizes your board, helps you to be a lot safer. Um, other things with, with cutting items is to have a scrap bowl off to the side. 
Um, don't leave your, your food scraps on the, the cutting board because it's very easy to not know what's the, the pieces that you're going to use and what are the scraps. And you could easily just kind of mix them all together. So as soon as you cut off items off of your onion, you know, take them, the scraps, and put them inside of that bowl. Again, thinking about containers, what we were talking about earlier, when items are contained, they're easier to identify. So the food scrap bowl, it could be a bag too, just a simple plastic bag, just something to put your scraps in. Um, another couple of tips, um, using a nice big butcher knife versus a, a too small of a knife can be helpful um, because you can use the weight of the knife to help guide you when you're cutting. There are some cutting techniques that I'm not going to get into right now because we're focused on tools, but again, this too is an area I would recommend getting some kind of one-on-one -on -one training so we can show you a few more things on how to cut safely. Other quick little tools with cutting, um, you can also use something called a finger guard. This goes on uh, the fingers of the hand that's holding on to the vegetable, and it, it just kind of goes on the front of your, your knuckles or your fingers. So if you are cutting something and that knife again gets too close to your fingers, it's going to hit that guard. It's not going to cut your fingers. So it's another way to protect your fingers. Again, if you're kind of new to cutting or just a little uncomfortable with that. And then one other thing with cutting is um, peeling vegetables can be difficult to do safely if you have very limited vision. Um, some of those peelers are hard to tell where the end of the peeler is and where your hands are. Um, when you're peeling something, you could easily use that, that um, cutting glove again for some added protection. I have a carrot here. Um, and what how the, the adaptive peeler works is called a palm peeler. So you wear it on your finger kind of like a ring with the, the blade facing the palm or inside of your hand. So you're kind of cupping the adaptive peeler on the palm of your hand. So when it's cupped like that, I know exactly where that blade is. I get some good feedback. Um, I know it's in the palm of my hand versus a standard peeler where it's out in space somewhere. So it's in the palm of my hand, and then all I do is I hold on to the carrot or vegetable um, with one hand, and I slide down. And it's a very easy, very simple motion. I'm just kind of like sliding down or petting it. <laughs> um, and then I can also use my sense of touch to feel when the carrot is smooth, I know that it's peeled. When it's rough, I know I have to peel that some more. So very simple tool. I bought one of these, I use these at home a lot. Uh, very simple, easy, easy tool to use. And, and again, thinking safety in the kitchen, it's really gonna help you to be safe. All right, so we have one other area I wanted to cover, and this has to do with uh, measuring and mixing in the kitchen. So I'm gonna grab a couple of tools here and bring them over. So we're going to talk about measuring, mixing, and pouring. Okay, so in the kitchen when you're baking something, you're trying to um, measure your ingredients. That can be difficult to do if you can't see. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of adaptive measuring cups. Um, these are just standard measuring cups that you would buy anywhere. But what we do is, did is we adapted them. If you notice on the handles, you can see that there's some little black dots here. These dots were made with that spot and line pen I was talking about earlier, the paint. So what I did is I squeezed out the little dots on here. The one cup, I put one dot on the handle. The half cup, I put two dots. The third cup, three dots. And the fourth cup, four dots. And so if I'm trying to you know, maybe tell the one-third from the one-fourth cup, which can be very tough to do um, non-visually. All I do is feel those little dots and like, oh, there's three dots here. I know that's my one-third cup. So you don't have to go out and buy expensive measuring cups. Just buy some graduated measuring cups and adapt them with that spot and line pen. Um, so that those can be very helpful. Another type of um, measuring cup is called a ladle measuring cup which can be very helpful when you're measuring liquid ingredients. So say a recipe, I'm baking a cake or something, or brownies, and it calls for some uh, water. What I would do is take a bowl, fill it up with some water, just any bowl, and with the ladling cups, all I do, the what these are, are just standard cheap metal measuring cups, but we folded 
the handle upwards so it's like a ladle and I, as you can see I also put some of those spot and line markings on them as well so I folded up the handle and this allows me to hold on to the cup like a ladle and all I do is find my measurement using the spot and line markings and simply lower the cup down into the water and lift it up and it's automatically measured um, so things like water that can be helpful for um, you don't want to do this with things like oil just because it's a pain to pour it into a bowl and, and lower it down in um, but even if you're measuring things like like flour um, you know things like that the ladle with the handle facing up it gives you a little more stability versus a uh, measuring cup where the handle comes out to the side where you have to try to balance it. Um, the ladle cups just give that, that extra stability. Um, just a quick little thing too with my um, canister right here for the flour. Having your dry ingredients in a big canister is a nice thing to do versus keeping them in the bags um, because then that way you can easily lower your measuring cups into that big opening. It just makes it a lot easier for uh, physically getting the measuring cup in the bin in the container and removing it. We also use that wiki stick um, label to make an F on the top of my canister here for flour. So I know that that's my flour. All I do is feel the top of the canister. I know that that's what that is. All right, one other thing I wanted to show you, oh, a couple other things actually. Um, when you are baking and measuring and mixing, Think again about contrast. So have a variety of colors of your mixing bowls. I have some, you know, a blue one, I have an orange, yellow. So have some light colors and some dark colors. So if you're mixing up, you know, brownies, maybe use a light colored bowl so that you can um, pour it in there and have that good contrast. If you're mixing up a, a, a lemon cake, maybe use a darker color of your mixing bowl. And also just having a big mixing bowl is a good idea versus something that's too small. Anything that's big, you can kind of get in there. You can really stir it up a little bit easier versus something that's too small. And then the last thing I want to talk about is uh, pouring. So pouring yourself a drink, pouring ingredients when you're cooking, um, any of that can be a little bit challenging if you can't see where you're going. So a couple tips that I recommend for pouring. Um, one is to uh, stick your finger over the top of the cup and sticking inside of the cup. That works really well if you're pouring for yourself or if you're pouring a cold drink. That doesn't work so well if you're pouring a hot drink like coffee or pouring for someone else. They're not going to appreciate you sticking your finger in their cup. <laughs> but um, I'll show you this technique. So again, you have your finger over the, the upper rim of the cup. What you want to do is bring the cup to your pitcher or what you're pouring out of until you can actually feel where it's going to come out of, where the liquid's going to come out of, and then just very slowly and carefully start to pour. And then what you do is just pour slowly until you can feel that liquid touching your finger. So I'm going to keep pouring until I can feel the liquid touching my finger. I should be, oh, there it is. Um, and then once you feel that, then you can stop pouring, then you know that, to stop pouring that your cup is full. You also can tell when a cup is filling up by the weight of it, the weight changes, maybe the temperature of it changes. Um, but again, you know, you may be pouring something like hot coffee where you don't want to burn yourself. You don't want to stick your finger inside the cup. So there is something called a liquid level indicator. It's a little device that has a battery inside of it and then some metal prongs on the back side of it. So what you do is you stick this on the upper rim of your cup with the prongs facing inside the cup. Those prongs are, are a de detector to tell when that liquid is reaching the top of the cup. So when the liquid touches those prongs, we should hear something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some of the same techniques I followed before where I'm going to grab onto my cup, I'm going to move it around until I can feel the spout of the pitcher. I'm going to pour nice and slowly until I hear something. So we're going to keep pouring. I'll feel the weight of the cup changing. Ooh, it's beeping. Okay, so now I know to stop pouring. You can also adjust this liquid level indicator, move the little plastic on the back up or down depending on how full you want your cup to be. So this one, um, the way I had it, has a nice little, leaves a little bit of space on the top so that I don't overflow it or so that I can transfer my cup um, 
easily. And then one other thing too, I'm using a tray. I'm pouring over a tray. Um, definitely do that or pour over the sink so that if you do spill, you're not going to spill it all over your space. Um, this tray, a cafeteria style tray, is a very helpful tool. You know, in the kitchen, um, it's a container like we talked about earlier. It contains things. It makes them easier to feel and find using your sense of touch. Um, a lot of times when I'm working with people on managing their medications, their small pills, I tell them to get a tray and manipulate your pills over that tray. So if you drop them, you're going to easily be able to find them if you have limited vision. Okay, I think that is it. Um, that's the end of our, our class here. I hope you found it very helpful. Again, this was Cooking Sense. Um, we do a number of Cooking Sense classes. So again, how to cook safely and effectively with your other senses. Um, please stay in tune to our website. Again, www.vision-forward.org. Um, we will put on there any upcoming um, cooking sense classes or topics that we that we will be having. Um, I'm thinking of working with my son again on recording one on baking. So baking some brownies, I think we might do. So stay tuned to our website um, for more information. And um, thank you very much for your attention. Have a great day.